Hey there. Welcome to Be Well with Steph, the podcast, the show for women who know that personal wellness can be an actively pursued goal and who are ready to tackle building healthier daily habits with a little bit of good humor, a little bit of grace, and a lot of coffee. I'm Steph Jenko, your holistic nutrition coach and your host, and I'm here to help empower you to create and maintain a healthy lifestyle you love, a lifestyle that gives you the strength energy, and confidence to go after your wildest dreams. It's funny to me when people ask if I feel restricted by being vegan or following a plant-based diet, because I know that their assumption there is that I'm missing things, that I've given things up. In reality, learning to think outside the box in the kitchen has grown my exposure to foods exponentially. There are things that I didn't even know existed. Of course, you don't need to be vegan or even plant-based to incorporate what I'm about to share with you, just like you don't need to be plant-based to eat an apple or chips and salsa or almonds. They're just new foods and super nutritious new foods that you can add into your wheelhouse and expand your options. The first one I want to share is seitan. I had no clue what this was until just a few years ago. Seitan is a dough that is made from vital wheat gluten. Vital wheat gluten is a flour that is made from the gluten part of the wheat grain. The gluten is the protein part of the grain. So this flour is almost exclusively protein. You can knead it and bake it into a simple dough that can be seasoned all kinds of ways and makes really delicious substitute for things like roast beef or chicken nuggets or something like that. Seitan, when you break down the nutrition information, is super impressive to me. In a third of a cup of it, so imagine, you know, the size of maybe a small chicken breast, is about 120 calories, 2 grams of fat, 4 grams of carbohydrate, and 21 grams of protein. Again, it's the protein from the wheat grain. And that's another great example of why whole grains have protein. Look at that. So by making vital wheat gluten into a dough that we call seitan, you can add really rich protein sources to a variety of your veggie dishes. The second food I want to share is tempeh. I always knew what tofu was, mostly just in the context of like maybe a miso soup with tofu in it or something. I knew what tofu was, but I had no idea what tempeh was. Tempeh is fermented soybeans that come in a block. They're pressed into a block. So while tofu is a really soft or spongy texture, one-dimensional texture, Tempeh is more like a rough chop on soybeans that are fermented. And when they're usually sold, they're usually packaged and combined with some sort of grain like rice or millet. This is traditionally an Indonesian food, but when you get it in the grocery store, it's just packaged in a brick, but it's basically ready to be eaten. You could eat it as is, but you will have some of that bitter fermented flavor. I like to um, cut it into cubes or strips, marinate it or season it, and then either bake it in the oven or fry it in a frying pan. In this way, it can go on top of salads, it can go in wraps or on sandwiches. You can also crumble tempeh and add it to a bean or a veggie burger for a little bit of that toothier consistency, a little bit of that crumbly texture, but also for a tremendous protein boost. Half a cup of tempeh, so picture um, like a handful of cubes of tempeh tossed on top of your salad, Low in calorie, about 160 calories, 9 grams of fat that just come from the soybeans, uh, 16 grams of carbohydrate, and also high in fiber. They're a complex carbohydrate, just like all beans are, and then 16 grams of protein. So again, seitan or tempeh, awesome choices for throwing on tops of salads or in sandwiches or burgers if you're worried about that protein boost on a plant-based diet. I have recently become extra obsessed with tempeh. I don't know why, but I really like to cut it into thin strips and then season it with the, um, oh, I'm going to forget the name, with the vegan chickenless seasoning from Trader Joe's. It 
My sister says it tastes like the flavor packet out of a chicken ramen noodle packet, but season it with that and make what tastes like these little crunchy chicken strips and then putting them in a wrap with vegetables and hummus and stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The third food you may have never known existed like I didn't is nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is kind of a a joke among vegans because they put it on everything we put it on everything because it has this really nutty or cheesy flavor. It's awesome for making your dishes really savory. It's awesome for making cheese sauces or using as a replacement for Parmesan cheese or sprinkled cheeses, anything like that. Nutritional yeast is um, a strand of yeast that's very similar to what you would use for baking or for brewing, except it's grown specifically for Um, as a food product. It's grown because it is so nutritionally dense and then it's deactivated. It's not a live yeast like what you would bake with. It's deactivated before it is sold. It has a really long shelf life and it's really high in B vitamins especially. So if you are a person who is ever looking to supplement your B12 or make sure you're getting enough folate, anything like that, any of your B vitamins, it's a really good source of that. In addition to being pretty high in protein and fiber, like ounce for ounce. So nutritional yeast, I keep a large bag of, and then it gets sprinkled into sauces. It's great as like thickening in pasta, or I'll use it to make a cheesy sauce where I might boil some potatoes or carrots and then blend it up with garlic, onion, salt, pepper, and nutritional yeast to make that savory, cheesy flavor. So definitely check out nutritional yeast if that's not something you're already familiar with. I'd like to pause here for just a minute and take the opportunity to personally invite you to hang out. Well, hang out with us online. Be Well Together is my monthly membership program that I am completely obsessed with, and I want you to hear why. Do you want to learn more about nutrition and healthy habits, but you feel overwhelmed with the sheer amount of conflicting information on the internet? Well, I've got you covered with two mini trainings a month crafted especially for my members. Do you want to grab a quick new recipe to try for dinner? Hit up my hand-picked recipe bank. Maybe you're struggling with your mindset or your habits and you need someone to bounce your ideas off of? You can post in our member forum for some friendly discussion and support. The beauty of Be Well Together is that you don't have to go it alone. You get to go it with us. You have a safe and trusted place to ask your nutrition and wellness questions, get fresh recipes and resources, learn through easily digestible, pun intended, mini lessons that you can watch and rewatch at your own pace. And did I mention that my new monthly webinar series is included in the membership? 20 bucks a month, access to all the things. Visit bewellwithstuff.com slash together, linked in the show notes for all the details. Can't wait to hang out with you there. The next item is cashews. Of course, I knew that cashews existed as a delicious, salty nut that could be munched on, but I did not know that they could be anything else other than eaten. I didn't know the magic that there is to soaking your cashews in boiling water and then blending them into what we might call a cashew cheese. Oh my goodness. Cashew cheese when you blend it up with maybe a little bit of that nutritional yeast I was just talking about and some seasonings make such a good dip. If I add in some acid like lemon juice or apple cider vinegar, it is so, so good for making like a sour cream type dip. We would call it a cashew cream. I'm going to link to a recipe for something like that in the show notes. So if you're like, what is she talking about with soaking and pureeing cashews? I will definitely have you check that out. But it's those additions to the meals that are super savory, that are higher in healthy fats, that make your meals extra satisfying. So I could eat vegetables any day of the week, but when I eat vegetables with some cashew cheese sauce on top, it really just elevates the meal. And I know some of you are gonna be like, this girl's just talking about cashews. Try it out, trust me, let me know what you think. One of the foods I'm currently obsessed with is tahini. 
Now, tahini is to sesame seeds like peanut butter is to peanuts. It's just ground up sesame seeds into a paste. But for some reason, it tastes so, so good uh, when you make it into a dressing. So I like to take tahini and mix it with a little bit of lemon or lime juice, maybe some chili powder, garlic powder, and then a little bit of water to thin it out to the consistency I want it to be. And I use uh, tahini dressing on my salads all the time. Healthy fats that are found in the sesame seeds help you to absorb the nutrients that are in all of your vegetables that you're eating in your salads or in your dishes and give it a really rich flavor. So tahini, I had no idea existed before being vegan. It's also an ingredient that a lot of people would include in hummus or other like Mediterranean type food because those healthy fats I keep talking about are the omega-3s, the omega-3 fatty acids, and those are found in nuts and seeds as well. So that's a really cool benefit to including that too. Speaking of omega-3 fatty acids, flaxseed and chia seeds were things I wasn't really including before adopting a plant-based diet. They're really high in those healthy fats that protect our heart and are good for our brain health. So we want to make sure we're including a lot of omega-3s from a variety of sources, but flax and chia are really high. There are other high sources like hemp or walnuts too, but I really find flax and chia cool because they work as a great binder when you're baking. You might have heard people talk about a flax egg or a chia egg before. You make a flax or chia egg by taking one tablespoon of the seeds, whisking it up with Some people will say three tablespoons of water. I prefer a little bit less. So like two and a half tablespoons of water, whisking them up together and then letting them sit for about five minutes, they'll start to gel. The same way if you've ever made chia seed pudding or seen that or added chia seeds to your oatmeal, the way they kind of stick together and form a little bit of a gel, that works as an awesome binder when you're baking if you'd like to engage in some egg-free baking and find another way to include the omega-3s and the fiber and the protein that come from the flaxseed or chia seeds. So those were things I did not start incorporating until I was plant-based. But now, in in addition to making eggs out of them, I sprinkle flaxseed and chia seed on everything. I put it on salads, in toasts, in oatmeal, in smoothies, in sauces as a thickener. Flaxseed, ground flaxseed works as a thickener in sauces really well too. There's so many ways you can include it. And all of these things are just ways that we can kind of level up the veggie or plant-based dishes that we're making. We can really pack in extra nutrients, extra fiber, extra vitamins, those healthy fats in ways that are also super delicious and super satisfying. So there you have it. Steph's list of six foods she never knew about before being vegan. The good news is, is you don't have to wait any longer to hear about them. Now you know. So now you can go out, throw in some extra seeds, give it a sprinkle of nutritional yeast, try some tahini, experiment with a protein you never had before, and then show me the goods. Go over to Instagram and tag me at Be Well With Stuff so I can see the new things that you are trying that are enriching your culinary experience. Don't forget to check the show notes for a couple of my favorite recipes. And I'd love to see you on the inside of Be Well Together, my monthly membership program, where we share new delicious plant-based recipes and what to do with them all the time. Thank you so much for listening to Be Well with Steph, the podcast. When there are a million things that you could be doing, I appreciate your choosing to hang out here. And I am proud of you for continuing to work on your own wellness journey. I invite you to head over to BeWellWithStuff.com for the details from this episode, my blog, upcoming events, and lots of other resources. If you enjoyed today's show, I'd love to hear from you. I'm BeWellWithStuff everywhere you like to hang out on social media, so come on over and say hi. Until next time, my friends, be well.